a little talk twice. Again, uh, today we're talking about RSS feed, and uh, RSS stands for really simple syndication or rich site summary. It depends on who you ask. It's a way of sharing data online. We just looked at the Yahoo and how Yahoo has all these different organizations that People Magazine right here makes this available in RSS. So all this data on Yahoo is comes from somewhere else in his package. Like uh, Reddit? Reddit? Read it? Reddit? Reddit. Reddit? Reddit? What is that website? Reddit? Reddit. R-E-A-D? Reddit? R-E-D-D-I-T. No, R-E-D-D-I-T. R-E-D-D-I-T? Uh, hold on. Yes, Harvey, I'm in class. What's going on? Okay, ciao. <coughs> Was it dot com? Again, this is the same idea. You can see all these things are f from somewhere else and then put together. In fact, this looks like an RSS feed, basically all this stuff right here. This is what one would look like, okay? And I don't really look at the Reddit. Is this, is this a popular place? Do, do you guys read this? Is this I a read it all the time. Really? Yeah, there's a bunch of like funny news stories and stuff. Uh, okay. The best vending machine from the 1960s? Wow. Okay, uh, again, the RSS is a version of XML. And uh, let's look up XML. I know it's, there's a link here somewhere. RSS, in the early days of RSS, you had to have something called an aggravator to read it, which was kind of a, like a piece of software that would read the feed. Um, and as the feed is updated, it would be in real time on your end when you were using the software. But uh, in this case, um, it's, uh, uh, you can use it right in the browser. You don't need that. Again, RSS is a version of XML formatting in plain text. RSS format itself is relatively easy to read both by automated processes and humans alike. An example feed would look like this. So again, here's some of the code. It will start out. And remember, these things are called chevrons, the little carrots. We'll be making some of those today. Uh, this first one is this first line of code tells you what language you're reading in. Of course, the internet is full of all kinds of different languages. Okay. Uh, second one, of course, tells you what version we're using, RSS version 2.0. Then you'll notice there's a channel tag, and then a title tag, and then a description tag, and then some links, and so on. Okay, so this is just what it, it generally it will look like. Um, again, it's a version of XML. Uh, where is my XML link? Uh, here it is. Again, XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. is a markup language that defines a set of rules for encoding documents in a format that is both human readable and machine readable. The W3C XML 1.0 specification, several other related specifications, all of them free open standards. Um, I don't know, we don't need to read all that. Just remember XML stands for extensible markup language. That might be on the test. Again, here's some of the old feed readers, Atom, SOAP. SVG is a version of XML, and uh, did we make an SVG file yet? We'll have to, we'll make one. Uh, if we haven't done it yet, we'll make one. Let's do it next class. We have to do it on the Mac side. I don't have the software on the Windows side to make an SVG file right now. Um, again, most of the programs, like Microsoft uses XML, same with OpenOffice. Uh, Google uses XML a lot in their sharing of data and so on. Um, I don't know. Okay, let's uh, let's find a let's find a feed. So uh, the easiest place to find a feed that I have found is on Yahoo. So if you go to Yahoo, go everybody go to Yahoo, Yahoo. And on Yahoo, the easiest way to find a RSS feed is to actually type it in. So uh, of course we all love hockey, so we can put in hockey RSS feeds, and you'll see it starts coming up automatically. So if I type in hockey RSS feeds, um, the first one comes up right here. It says sports.yahoo.com NHL RSS right there. It says right here. So you're looking for something that says RSS. 
and if you click on that it'll give you um, oh it'll give you the um, the feeds whenever you see this little icon this little uh, logo right here the one with the little orange uh, square with the little white lines this is an indication of the uh, RSS feed so if you want you can find your favorite hockey team of course uh, Pittsburgh Penguins is everybody's favorite hockey team right or is it the Sharks? Sharks? I'm gonna do Penguins because they just played last night and they probably have a lot of data if you click on it this is what a feed kind of looks like the feed looks uh, mostly text-based but it could have images in it uh, mostly in a list. Some of the things that you'll see in a feed, of course, would be a title, a date, a time, and then what, what, what the feed is about. Okay? Plus, it could also have images as well. Uh, this one just doesn't have images. And of course, Cindy Crosby got a concussion, so he's out, which makes my mother sad. Um, feeds are constantly being updated as people write articles and add them to the feed. And the reason why we use a feed is because we can put this data somewhere and it's constantly being updated automatically. Right? If you're making a website or a blog or something, you can put a feed on there and as people write new articles, it automatically changes on your site. It's a way to keep data fresh. Does that makes sense, fresh data? I don't know. Um, so this is what a typical one, but there's all kinds of ones. Um, So mostly the extension has a .xml at the end there. You can see it up here. See, see the extension up here? I know it's kind of small here, but it says .xml up here. But some of them might say um, um, ASP or something. Like in my other class, we were looking at uh, art. Art, RSS feeds. And I was looking at some art RSS feeds. Um, and uh, here's some of them down here. Like we want a ceramics and pottery one. And you'll notice up here it still says ASPX and medium equals ceramics. But this is a feed as well. It just has a different extension up here. But this one actually worked in my other class as well. And what happened to my hockey? Oh, there's my hockey one. I'm going to use my hockey one. So... What we're going to do is we're going to take this feed and convert it <coughs> into JavaScript. And then we'll take that JavaScript and put it on a web page we make today. You guys can make a web page, right? Yeah, you guys can make a web page. So we're going to go make a web page. We're going to take this feed and put it on there. So we're going to build our own blog, basically. It's going to be like a blog we're making. But we have to convert this feed into JavaScript to be able to do that. To convert this feed, I'm going to copy it. So, uh, of course, we're on Windows today, so you're going to hit Control C. Of course, highlight it. So, highlight your your link to your RSS feed, and then hit Control C. And then let me see if I can remember my page. Hold on, RSS dot B L O O P L E dot N E T. Hold on. Yeah. And then I want you to go to this page. It's it's R S S dot B L O O P. What is it? B L O O P. L E dot N E T. Copy. Did you guys copy the the feed? As long as it's an RSS page, it has to be an RSS page. It has a certain format. You need to find an RSS. You could. There's all kinds of feed. There's a feed for every topic you could ever imagine. I'm sure there's a feed for every topic. You know, skateboarding feed, fishing feed. I mean, everybody writes something about oh, something, don't they? Like a blog? Yeah, that all blogs, everything on WordPress is a feed. Um, RSS. How did you get that uh, web page where it fits for penguins? I keep clicking on different things, but it's not. B O a B L. Just giving me B L. B L O O P L E dot N E T. O O. 
B L M O B L L. Okay, get a click on the O. Yeah, that I can click. P L E. It's fine. That, that's the okay. page. Just it's formatting it differently. But this is a good feed. So I did that point. Copy, control C or whatever. Yeah, okay. Copy. Oh, do that. I don't know. And then go here and you paste it in there. And then we're going to get it. I did. Oh, That's you did. Yeah. So I could just go Control V. Yeah. You can limit the amount of articles because remember the feed is a constant long stream of data. You might need to limit it to. Yes, yeah, so I get so confused when it types in there. I don't know what it is. Because I just type it straight into the tub. Yeah. 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 Ye
All programs, notepad, do you see it? It's a big blank thing, okay? You're gonna write your first HTML code. Uh, first thing you do is put a chevron. That's called a chevron. And type in HTML like that. Oops, no question mark. And then the second line for HTML is called uh, head. And then title. And then a closing title. And you can actually write a title if you want in there. And then uh, closing head. Oops. Oops. And then body. Oops. And then closing body. And then closing HTML. That's the minimum that you want. So if you want to write a title, this is the best site ever. So get to that point. Make sure you have chevrons on each side. Again, these are chevrons. These things right here are called chevrons. So get to that point. NSA. NSA. No, we're not going to NSA. <laughs> How about uh, Stud Finder? Because I spell I. S I sell lots of stud finders here. Oh, look, this one is only 128 bucks. That's my photo right there. I took that picture. Um, and let's see. Uh, here we go. Um, Lowe's. But the blue link that you see here is the title. That's the title. All the blue links right there. See the blue links? That's the title of the page. So what we just wrote in here in Notepad is the blue link inside of Google. So just keep that in mind. When you write your title, it should be something that you think somebody's going to search to find your site. SEO 101 right there. OK, so everything in the body. So let's write something in the body. Let's write something in the body. I like art and design. Whatever your thing is. And we're going to save this and see if it works. So let's save it. Um, I'll, when we go to save this, so make sure in the body tag is where you write your text in here, in the body tag. You can see it here. See, in between this body and this body. So to save this, I'm going to go under File, Save As. And down here where it says Save As Type, you need to change that. You do not want TXT. You need to change that to All File Types all file types and the first page of your website is always called index so we call it i n d e x dot h t m l so save it index dot h t m l encoding tells it what format the data is in um, so it, it's 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 a formatting you know what what is, what is the data in so if you hit save i already have one so that's why it said replace and so it replaced it. Okay. To view it, I want you to go to Firefox. Go to Firefox and go under File, Open. Go and find your index file. I put mine on my desktop and hit Open. And you should have whatever you wrote in there. I like art and design. You should have whatever you wrote in there. See, you made your first website. You're on your way to being a web designer. I don't know where I filed. <laughs> did it? Did it? Was I supposed to check where I filed? Where I saved it? Didn't tell us to do that, did it? Usually, you should always ask on here. What? What is this? What did you do? I don't know. I just did what he did. I didn't. I didn't look where I saved it. Something. Okay. You saved this. Uh huh. Okay. 
You get a title on your page? File, open, file, open file. Where were you saved it? Do you know where you saved it? No, I don't want to see your lines. Is that right? Yeah, don't use internet. It's a little bit. So okay, let's put our feet on there. Okay, we're going to put our feet in. And I've got mine on there. It won't come off. Where, where, where did you save it? I don't know. Yeah, it's there, now it's on the desktop. So go to Firefox. Don't use an exploder, whatever you do. So file, open, file. File, open, file. Go to desktop. <laughs> okay, let's get started. We're getting a little out of hand. I'm trying to get out of hand, okay? Okay, so in order to, if you think of a web page, it's all made of different areas, right? You got a photo here, you got some text there, you got links somewhere. Everything on a web page is in a div tag. D I V stands for div. Okay, we can do div tags. And you think of a div tag as a, as a square, a box, okay? We also give our div tag to format it. We're gonna use something called CSS, and we give it a class, equals, and I'm gonna call it uh, my feed, like that. Notice how there's quotes around my feed like that. So I'm gonna write this in, down in the body tag after this text here. So here, let's go, let's move on. We're going to go back to our code. Back to our code. Why don't I have two of them? I don't know why I have two of them. And I'm going to put a P tag after this, which makes it a new paragraph, like this. Then I'm going to go and make a div tag. So I put a P tag. This just says go on to a new line. This says, this t says it make a new line. Okay. And then. Are you recording? Yes. Is it a div class space div space class? Mm-hmm. Equals. What are all these signs then? Again, I'm going to squeeze that code that I copied in there. Whoosh! And it might look jumbly mess, but that's okay. So again, that, that feed I got from the, the, that website, I'm going to put it in there. Um. And I need to add... Okay, get to this point and I'll show you what you need to add. After you put the feed in there, you need to add HTTP colon at the beginning of the feed here, right here. So remember that feed that you copied from that website that we went to, you need to put it in between the div tag there and you need to add HTTP in front of the forward slash forward slash. Okay. HTTP and those two dots. And that's a, that's a colon. I think you call it two dots as well. Two dots. <laughs> if you want. Two, two dots on top of each other is a colon. Okay, if you add that at the beginning of your feed like that and then you save your file, Go and save. You don't have to go save as. You just hit save now because you already saved it as an HTML file. So you just go file save and then go to Internet Exploder or no, go to, go to Firefox and you can refresh your page and you should see your feed. My feed is now on my page. Wow. Okay, so now your feed is on your page. I don't know. I don't, where did it go? He just said. Oh, it's because I'm doing it over there. Look. 
like, oh yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm done. File yeah, there. Yeah, it says yeah. not that says the file yeah, there. I know. Okay, so that feed that we copied should be on your page. Oh, there we go. So that's what you have to do. That's what Young does, right? Yeah. Well, so I was well, just this is, uh, yeah. people, you don't think they write all that and stuff, they steal other people's stuff, right? And he, for him, it was like this. He made it big. Ah, so I was just copying him, and I thought you were going to You cannot just copy no, that's why he like made a fake, you know. Uh, okay, did you guys get a feed? Okay. Yeah, I know. I saw. <laughs> what do you need all this for, anyway? That's coding. Oh. Yeah, so you don't. But if you want to uh, go into, like, make websites or something. The little window at the bottom. Okay, so I suppose this is more of a general class. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to learn the PowerPoint yeah. and Excel and what. Okay, so uh, the problem we see though, of course, is this pretty ugly, so let's make it look beautiful. Okay, so we want to make this look pretty. If that's a word, pretty. I guess pretty is a word, isn't it? So let's go back to our code. Okay, so to make it look pretty, we need to add some styling to our div. Remember we called it class right here, right? So we're going to come up here to the head section up here. And after the title, the closing title, I'm going to put a space. Okay, and we're going to put a chevron and we're going to call it style. Like that, style. And we're going to hit like that. And then we're going to do a closing style. Like this. So again, you're going to do a style. So after there, let me put some space in there so you can see. So again, we got a style. So after the closing title, you're going to write style with two chevrons on each side and then style with a forward slash and a chevron there. So in, in between this style, we're going to give this uh, some color. 
to give it color. And remember, we called this box my feed, right? Do you see it? It's called my feed. So I'm going to come up here to the code and I'm going to hit a dot and I'm going to say my feed like this. And then we're going to use an open bracket. This one that looks like, a, what is that called? I guess it's a bracket and then closing bracket. And what we're writing here is something called cascading style sheets or CSS for cascading style sheets. So now we can give my feed something. We can give it a background color if you want. Let's give it a color. We can say, uh, we could change the font color. Right now the font color is what? Black. What is my font color? Yeah, see how it's black? It's pretty ugly, right? So we can give it a color. We can, we can go and say color, <laughs> colon, space, and then to, to all the coloring on the internet is all done in something called hexadecimal values. That's a big word for me, that is. You know, remember I had Sister Rita as the, my English teacher. She still <laughs> teaches today, too. Sister Rita Yates. Oh, Yates. I don't know. She was pretty old when I was in class. I can imagine how old she is now. Sister Rita Yates. You can look her up. Yates was her last name. Y-E-A-T-E-S. I remember how to spell her name. So all the coloring that we do online is in something called hexadecimal values. And so let's look that up for real quick. I think that's on the final. So you remember this hexadecimal. Hexadecimal. In mathematics and computing, hexadecimal, also base 16 or hex, is a positional numerical system with a radex or base of 16. It is used as 16 distinct symbols, often, most often the symbols 0 through 9 to represent values. 0 to 9 and A, B, C, D, E, F, or alternative A, B, C, D, E, to represent values 10 to 15. Hexadecimal numerals are widely used by computer system designers and programmers as each decimal digit represents four binary bits that allows more human friendly representation of binary code. So we'll learn how to count in binary. Oh my God. Yes, we will learn how to do that. But just remember, so if you don't know what color you want, you, there is a hexadecimal chart. We can look that up, hexadecimal color. color here we go hexadecimal color chart so uh, here we go here's the colors right here so um, the most common ones are like this this is how they're written so if you want your text to be in maroon you could put pound sign eight zero 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 or yellow is pound sign f f f f f f zero zero or of course white is f f f f f f f or my favorite is called light sky blue is three three c c f f so how do we write that we go back to our code up here between my color here, where I said color colon, right? I'm going to hit the pound sign, and what did I say? Maroon was eight. You've got pound sign as a hash, isn't it? Yeah, this is a pound sign oh. or a hash or whatever. This is a Twitter thing, right? Isn't that Twitter? Hashtag. Hashtag. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there should be six digits. Again, my favorite uh, color. When I, when I first did HTML back in 1995 was the first page I made. Uh, I was uh, making a page uh, uh, and I was using light sky blue, which is 33CCFF. It's my favorite. So if I save this now in preview, my, my text should be blue now. Let's see. My text should be blue. Let's see. We refresh. <laughs> light sky blue text. See that? So how did I get light sky blue text again? Do I, do I file and save it then? You have to save it. File, save. save. So see if you got a different color text. See if you got different color text. This is What you put after fifty percent? What's that called? Semicolon. So if you save it now and you view it, watch what happens. It's fifty percent of the page. Now this is called liquid layout. Okay. And the reason why it's called liquid layout is as I change the size of the screen, the document will change as well. 
And we use that and we do that in what we call responsive design so that when we make our websites, they can shrink down and fit on our phone. Have you made it go smaller than you want to fit on your phone, right? We can give our box a background <laughs> width. Did you get 50%? Yeah. <laughs> we can give our we can give our website a box uh, as well as a a color background. You can type in background dash color colon and let's give it a background color. Um, what color can we do? Uh, uh, a gray is uh, D. D F D F D F. I think that's gray. So background dash color semicolon D F D F D F D F D F. I think that's a gray. We'll find out. It's gray. Is it a gray? Yep. Let's see. Yeah, ugly gray. But you can see your box now. What do you call background? What? I don't think I'm going to be a web developer. Background dash color. Nope. Oh. You got just like that? I know it's hard if you misspell something, you don't write something properly, it just won't show up. You guys okay over here? I should have the hiccups. Okay. You guys okay here? You got gray? D. D. F. D. F. And then a semicolon. Oh, where's the semicolon? Like that. Oh, my God. What? Yeah. It's 50% of the page. In this inch? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so then do I file and save? Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to keep going? Or you, you got to hit join? Do you want to put a picture in? No. Is, back to is, there a chart? is there a chart that have the backgrounds? Yeah, I think it's going to Where's that website you're on, dude? Ah, that's right. www.wspool.com. They have a color picker on the www.wspool's page. The background. What the heck's the decimal code? Yeah. There's literally just color-x.com. Color-x.com? No, we need to move now. Let's just move out. Hex? Hold on. Now we can upload it. Is that what we, what so here's all the colors here, as well as uh, what'd you say? Color, color, dash hex. H -E -X? Are you putting that in? Color dash hex dot com. There you go. Look at all those beautiful. Oh, there's only a few colors, but there's more than that. Are we doing anything else, or do we file and, and input it now? How about we put an image on our page? Let's go put an image on. We want to have an image on our page. So let's go steal somebody else's image. We'll go to Flickr. Go to Flickr and type in, um, type in something. What, oh, flowers. Open new, this one. No, open new. So go find an image and download it on your computer and remember what it's named, what it's called. It's the most important thing. So to, I love this red flower. Isn't it beautiful? So I'm going to download it off of Flickr. Notice on Flickr you have a little download here. Where's my red flower? I've got a different one. What did you do? I've got some chicken. Where's my flower? What's that? There's no chicken flowers? I've got, I've got some chicken. I've got some flowers in so to download a picture, yeah. you'll see right here. Download. Which size? Um, whatever size you want. And you can I'm gonna do. Flower you want, can you? And remember what size it is that you download, because you're gonna have to put that in the code. Oh no. Oh no. Right. Where do, where, you can't you, remember that? How do you download this though? I'm gonna download this one. Five hundred. How do you download it? You click on what that? is happening? I don't know. He's going too fast again. Oh, they disabled downloading. Okay. This one you can't download. Oh. This one, they can't download this one. Okay. How did you get onto that? Where did you go? Maybe <laughs> this one I can download? Okay. Um. <laughs> Type in flower. No. It's copyrighted. She's disabled and downloaded. 
Ah, why am I? Okay. Whatever, I'm going to go to Google and steal one, please. You do know if I'm here. Yeah. Talk to me, I can't do this. I don't know. Does that sound logical? I think so. You just need to get an image on your computer somehow. I don't know how to get one on your computer. Remember the size, though. Do you know the size? My son sent me show. So I'm going to save this picture and make sure you know what the name of it is and put the extension on it. So this is a flower.jpg for JPEG. And most, make sure you save it in the same location as your HTML file. Save it in the same location. Okay. So again, download a picture. Notice that I have my picture. Hold on. JPEG image? JPEG is fine. But make sure you save it in the same location. So where is my index file? Didn't I slip it on the desktop here somewhere? No, here's my picture. Where's my here's my index? Oh here it is. Here's my index. Okay, make sure these two are friends. Friends forever. Friends forever. Did you guys save your picture? What do we have to name it? Whatever you want. Make sure you remember what the name is, though. I typed flower.jpg and saved it. Next, in the same location as your index. Okay, let's put this in our page. So to put this on our page, uh, I'm going to go below my uh, feed here. You want it above or below? How about we put it above our feed? How about we put it after the P tag here? Remember this P tag here? To put our picture in, we're going to go uh, Chevron, IMG, for image, space, SRC for source, equals, Quote, the name of the file, I call mine flower.jpg. Um, and then we're going to do a width. And my width was about um, 200 pixels. You can just put 200 in there. You don't have to put a height. It'll, it'll automatically put a height in there for you. Oh, I don't need a quote. What's yeah, I do. After flower? Is that a dot? And there's no space. I think it's PX like that. There we go. Is that a dot after flower in space? Hmm? What's that after flower? Is it a space and a dot? That's the extension is dot JPG. And then closing the image tag. Okay, that'll put a picture on your web page. If you save it, and preview, you should have an image now. There, you got a beautiful oh, flower. Can you go back? I I, I'm going to go back. I just want to make sure it's going to work. There you go. So, again, to put a image on your page, you can go image source right here and there. How about the weather? You guys want to put a weather on your page? Who wants to put the weather on their page? Right? You want to put the weather on your page? No. I haven't got this on my page yet. I've got my chevron on the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Why do you have to type it all so often? And when, so when you type that in, then what do you do? What's that? When you've typed that, then what do you do? I save and go on preview. File. And then go preview in the browser. How about a video? You guys want to put a video on your page? Let's do it. Okay, let's let's do a video next. Let's go to YouTube. Find your favorite video. Nothing like cats playing piano, right? So let's go to YouTube. And let's type in what do you want to listen to. 
Um, cats playing piano. There we go. This one. Ah, oh, this one. This one's the number one. Okay, we don't. Yeah, that looks a little torture. Oh, we could put in one of my videos. Oh, look. Best damn channel ever. Damn. See, it's water. Don't you get it? It's a water. It's a dam. See the water? Now you get it? There's water coming over there. How about Billy Jean? Can we put that on there? Oh yeah, man. Y'all had fun yet or what? Oh, come on, man. He works at Apple. He does really well. She was more like a beauty queen from a movie scene. I said, don't mind what you do. Okay, so if you want to put a video on your page, we're going to use a magic, magic, okay, so something Microsoft invented, if you can imagine Microsoft actually invented stuff, on the internet Microsoft invented a lot of things that we use today, okay, the, the little icon at the top up there called the Favcon, that little thing, that, that little icon at the top up there, see those little icons up by the name right there, that's called a Favcon, that was invented by Microsoft. They included it into um, Internet Exploder. That's why it's called a Favcon. It stands for favorites, right? When you bookmark an Internet Exploder, if you remember, you could bookmark a favorite. And they wanted to have a little icon in the bookmark. So they invented the way to do that. And that's why it's called a Favcon, or favorite icon. Um, but they also invented something called an iframe. So it's iframe. And what the iframe is, is a way of taking data from one area of a website and put it somewhere else. It's like taking a window where you can take data from somewhere and put it into a window. So YouTube uses it today. So if you want to embed or put the video on your web page, we use an iframe. To do that, if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see the share button. See where it says share right here? See where it says share? You click on the share. And we're going to use embed. Don't use this button. We're going to use the one that says embed. And we're going to copy that by hitting control C. Copy that. We go back to our website. Notice it's an iframe. See it says iframe right there? Go back to your website and paste it. I'm going to paste it after my image. And then save and you'll see your video on your website you'll see your video on your web. So all you have to do is copy and paste. And if I refresh my page, you'll see I have a video. Notice it's next to my flower because I didn't put a P tag in there. Um, but my video now is on my website. Again, all you have to do is copy and paste. Right from, right from. Oh yeah, man. Y'all had fun yet or what? Anywhere, anywhere on your page, just paste it in there. I just pasted it after my image. If you want it under your image, you got to put a P tag here, like that, and a closing P tag, like that. I just copied and pasted this from, from YouTube. And you should have a video embedded in your page. There it is. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, On this page for the weather, again, it's I just got to Google. 
and type in HTML weather widget and you should be able to second link here and then they have a couple different the easiest one is the first one these ones are all kind of complicated I don't like this one this has too much stuff this has way too much stuff so the first one's quite easy where you say get it now do you see where it says get it now and then you can put in auto detection or have a fixed location so let's say you have a business uh, let's say you have a, a, a you 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 have a resort somewhere and you want people to see the weather there. You can type in your favorite resort location. Uh, mine's in Bogota, Bogota, Bogota. We can put in Bogota, Colombia. I I know I'm getting it wrong. Centifedi Bogota. And then um, you can put in Celsius or Fahrenheit. And then, of course, you need to agree to the terms. When you're done, it says grab the code. Grab the code. And you copy this entire. Oh, this is not going to work. This is not going to work. This is not going to work. Don't worry. I, I figured this out. This is not going to work. Don't put the weather on. It only works if you put it on a web server. It doesn't work locally on your computer. So don't do that. We can just. Okay, but it wasn't too, that hard to make your web stuff, right? The whole point of this all today was that a lot of the things on the internet are just being shared content. People are not making all this stuff. They're just pushing stuff around, you know? You got your fake news everywhere, right? You just share your fake news. I was thinking of just starting my own fake news site, right? I should just start Oh, they it. already have CNN. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> got him. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> Good afternoon to you, too. So, um, I don't know, let's save this file and, and put it on Canvas for me. And then we'll watch a video and then go home. So save that file and there should be an assignment box where you put that HTML on there is all I need. So save that HTML file and there should be an assignment box on Canvas that you upload it to. Did you guys see that? On Canvas, log in, there should be one. So let's watch a movie and then we're gonna go home. Oh, I gotta go to a meeting. And I gotta do evaluation too. I got two things to do before 5, 2.30. So we're gonna have I'm to make run a short video explaining what I want you to do with uh, what's called an RSS. No, you don't have to watch that.